this is a fear that my eating disorder voice is just like projecting uh, is gonna happen in reality it never happened and yet I was so fearful of it and this is why we can't listen to our eating disorder voice because our eating disorder voice likes to dramatize and catastrophize everything So I'm here today to answer one of your guys' questions to me regarding weight distribution. Is my weight going to start to evenly sort of distribute or am I going to be forever holding on to weight in my belly? This is a really common fear for a lot of people dealing with eating disorders. This is by far the number one thing that blocked me from my recovery because every single time I'd start to eat again, every single time I'd lay low on the exercise, what happened? Boom, like I all of a sudden would have this huge belly. And of course, that's like a huge fear of mine because that tends to be like the one place where I'm like, it has to stay small. I want a small belly, I want the six pack abs. Like there was so much energy of perfection that I felt towards my belly. And like the idea of eating more and having my belly just be completely like big and bloated and gain a lot of weight was absolutely terrifying to be quite honest. And so every time I'd start to eat and I would, um, start the process of recovery this would happen and what would that make me do it would make me restart restricting again being like oh this can't happen um i remember in recovery i'd always be like i just i don't want it here i just like i want my arms to get bigger even still like i have really small arms like i don't know why i have these small arms um but i do i have these small arms i don't know why my weight doesn't like that's just like a genetic thing no one in my family does my weight doesn't really go in my arms um but i remember always being like i just want to like push this out to my arms to my legs like why can't i gain weight anywhere else but my body? Um, but so I want to explain to you guys why that's happening um, and it's simple honestly um, when you are restricting your organs are really affected and when you start feeding yourself food again your body gets really excited and it goes yay there's so many repairs to be done <laughs> um, so as a quick party like yay food and then it goes let's get to work um so your body starts accumulating fat in the midsection as a way to protect you and as a way to um to start the healing process to start repairing all of your organs um you can live without a limb my arm here i love my right arm it does so many things for me i can pick my nose i can brush my hair i can pick my skin which i shouldn't be doing um but i can do a lot of things with my right hand um i can also live without my left hand or my left hand i can't live without my left hand i can live without my right hand i can live without any of my hands is totally fine. I can live. I'm going to survive if one of my um, arms get cut off. I can't survive if I don't have a liver, a kidney, um, a spleen, um, a proper functioning digestive tract. Like those are the things that I can't live without. And so those are the things that really need to be repaired. And that's the first things like those are the first things that your body's going to work on repairing once you start feeding it more food. So it accumulates all of this lovely protection here in your midsection, um, so that it can start this process. Now, once you start moving further down the journey into your road of recovery, um, once you start becoming nutritionally rehabilitated um, and your body starts getting back into an energy balance, what's going to happen is your body is going to start going like, ah, we have an abundance of food. We are like, okay, now my liver is working better now. The kidneys are working better. The pancreas is working better. Okay, we can let go of a lot of this that we're holding on in our midsection and we can even this back out. Now we can work on, you know, having a nice booty and thighs and strong arms and boobs and, you know, beautiful round cheeks and all of that. Like it can now start redistributing the weight. Um, so simple answer to your question because this is literally it they're like can you please just tell me is weight distribution gonna like ever happen yes it's gonna happen now how is it gonna happen I'm not sure what did you look like before what does your family look like what is your genetic like way of distributing your weight like for me personally 
I'm someone who sort of just gains weight all over. That's how I am, that's how my mother is, that's how my sisters are. We're not those type of people that's like hourglass, like um, midsection and then like booty. Like that's just not how I am. I'm more of a just like weight everywhere. <laughs> um, some people gain a lot of weight up in their arms. They have a big strong back, big strong biceps, all of that. Um, and then they have like relatively smaller legs. Um, or they'll have like some nice curvy thighs and they'll have like a really small upper body. So the weight's going to redistribute but like how that redistributes, that's totally up to your body. And honestly, this is just something that we can't, we can't try and control and be so picky about. Um, your body distributes weight how it wants to distribute weight. Um, and that's why we see so many different um, body shapes and sizes out there in the world, right? We all have a different way um, that our body looks. So... I hope that helps you with that question. Um, hope that helps you on your journey of recovery, just knowing that you're not always going to be carrying all this like weight in your um, in your midsection. That will even out and things will start redistributing. I hope this makes sense to you. Um, again, this was a huge fear of mine and then like mostly everything in recovery, it's a huge fear when you're unrecovered to think, like go through all of these things then to like get to this place of recovery but once you're in recovery it's like none of it's fearful and you're like why was I so scared of this this just completely evened out so I tell my clients this I go focus on right here right now what is good for your body right now we will deal with the future when the future comes so like I have a lot of clients that are like but I'm just going to like continually binge and just eat and eat and eat and eat and then I'm gonna be 300 pounds and I'm not gonna be able to stop and I go you know what we will discuss that when that happens you know once you start you know becoming 300 pounds and eating all all this food all day and you're binging constantly all right we'll talk about it you're not there yet. You're eating 600 calories a day. We have no need to talk about what's going to happen if you start like overeating and overeating. That's not your, it's not what you're dealing with right now. So that's just how like I like to sort of look at it. For me, at least that helped. I was like, you know what? I will deal with it when I need to deal with it. But this is a fear that my eating disorder voice is just like projecting uh, is going to happen. In reality, it never happened. And yet I was so fearful of it. And this is why we can't listen to our eating disorder voice. Because our eating disorder voice likes to dramatize and catastrophize everything. It's like, oh my gosh, you take one bite of the dessert. Then you're going to eat the whole dessert. Then you're going to start like, you know, eating food off of everyone's plates and then you're going to eat the whole table, you're going to eat the whole bread basket and then you're going to go home and you're going to eat all the granola and everything that's in the, like, fridge. And it's like, this is what's going on in your mind and this is what the eating disorder voice is telling you from, like, a person just offering you a bite of cake. Just one bite. One bite of cake. And all of a sudden you think, like, all of this is going to happen. It's just like, oh my gosh, the eating disorder voice is so dramatic. Like, Oh, it's not gonna happen. Like, eat the piece of cake. You'll worry about what happens next when it happens, but stop like creating these insane scenarios of what's gonna happen. Um, I think this is really important, and this is like what we deal with in recovery in coaching is understanding the eating disorder voice and the healthy voice. And Stop supporting the eating disorder voice in everything you do and stop listening to everything it has to say and to really start supporting your healthy voice and what it's saying and how we support your healthy voice is by taking the actions that the healthy voice is saying. So for example, um, it's your snack time and you get this feeling of like, um, I don't really need this snack. I can just push through to you know dinner time. You don't need to eat more. That's the eating disorder voice right there, trying to tell you that you don't need food. Your healthy voice goes, no, my body needs all the nourishment that it can get. And it's going to take the snack and it's going to allow me to have an increase of energy and I'm going to feel more nourished and grounded. I love food. That's the healthy voice. And so the way that we support the healthy voice is then by going, you know what, eating disorder voice who tells me I don't need the snack, shut up, I'm going to actually just eat the snack and I'm going to follow what my healthy um, voice is saying. And that's recovery right there for you in a nutshell. It's hearing this, 
saying no, I'm not going to participate in that, listening to this tiny little voice over here, but slowly as you listen to it and listen to it and listen to it, your healthy voice becomes bigger and bigger and bigger until you're at like where I'm at right now. I'm going like, I don't hear this voice over here. Like what voice? There's nothing over here. This is on mute over here. All I'm hearing over here is my healthy voice speaking and telling me like, this is what you should be doing. This is like how much nourishment you need. So I'm gonna jump off here right now because I have a client session. Um, I hope that this was helpful. Please um, click the little bell button to get notified when I come out uh, with a video and hit subscribe. Send me an email if you wanna do coaching together, if you think coaching could be something that helps you actually move forward and take those steps into recovery. Send me an email, that's all down below. Let's hop on a free call and let's see if that will be an option for you. All right guys, I will see you later.